Hello, I'm Tracy Bates, curator with the U.S. Department of the Interior Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm coming to you from our exhibition, Thomas Moran and the Big Picture, and this is part of our series, Big Picture Morans, where we've been chronicling artist Thomas Moran's journey into Yellowstone country 150 years later to the day. He was the guest artist on Ferdinand Vandeveer Hayden's government-sponsored survey expedition of the region in the summer of 1871. So it's July 28th. Thomas Moran is a couple of weeks into his overall journey, but today marks his first full day at the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone River. He made a notation in his diary that simply says, sketching and photographing about the falls. You'd hardly know it from that brief entry, but Thomas Moran's time spent at the falls would have a huge impact on his career and on history. Upon his return home, his sketches from this expedition began circulating publicly. They were even used as part of official reports to the United States Congress, which was considering legislation to make Yellowstone the country's first national park. Thomas Moran debuted this enormous painting in May 1872, just eight months after his visit to Yellowstone and mere weeks after President Ulysses S. Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act into law. Joining me today is Alicia Murphy, historian at Yellowstone National Park. She's experiencing the same influential vista of the canyon and the falls that Thomas Moran did 150 years ago. So Alicia, what an amazing backdrop. What do you think would have made the biggest impression on Thomas Moran at that location? Oh, this is a spectacular area and part of the park. Um, it's uh, certainly very popular. Uh, we're here in the morning and there's already people all around. Um, you know, I think that even though there's a lot of people here, this, this landscape is still very impressive with the falls and the colors of the canyon. I think if you imagine this though, without any of this infrastructure and without any people around, you would have hear, heard the roaring of the falls um, from quite a ways off wondering, hearing rumors about some falls and wondering what it was gonna be like when you actually arrived here. Uh, I think Moran probably was quite struck by the colors of uh, the canyon walls. Uh, I think that that's something unusual, especially combined with kind of the rugged uh, features along the canyon wall uh, would have really caught his artist's eye, uh, as well as just the beautiful green of the falls themselves, contrasting with the reds and golds and uh, rust colors um, that really are uh, a juxtaposition um, along the uh, walls. Also the river at the bottom is so rugged and, and green and frothy. Uh, it's just a very, uh, between the slight smell of sulfur and the sound of the, the roaring of the falls and then the beauty of this area, I think it probably was something that Moran had never, had never seen before. So this would have been really interesting um, and exciting for him as an artist. Wow, that's all really impressive. Well, we know that people simply couldn't believe the various written accounts that they'd been reading about Yellowstone's unique geology and hydrothermal features. And a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So Thomas Moran's depictions of Yellowstone, in color no less, became really important for convincing the public about the wonders of this place. For example, those colors behind you are really unusual. The walls of the canyon are amazing shades of golds and browns. Can you tell us why that is? So yeah, the walls of the canyon uh, are incredibly striking and they are uh, the result of the rhyolite uh, that forms the rock uh, behind me here in the canyon. It's been hydrothermally influenced uh, by uh, hydrothermal features that are very common in Yellowstone. Of course, the most well-known hydrothermal feature is uh, Old Faithful Geyser and that is miles away from here. Uh, but this is part of a massive uh, hydrothermal area uh, and so the the acid in hydrothermal features, the acid in the heat works with the rock, creating um, these beautiful colors uh, that uh, Moran was so, so talented at capturing just from his memory uh, as he re replicated this, these uh, features for the, the big picture Moran. Thomas Moran also included a bear, a raptor, and maybe an elk in his famous painting. What can you tell me about the wildlife that lives in this part of Yellowstone? 
So the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone is centrally located in the park. Uh, so this is kind of uh, at the heart of this entire ecosystem. Therefore, it's a great habitat uh, for all of the major animals that we could find in Yellowstone, from bison to grizzly and black bears to uh, there's a wolf pack that dens nearby, um, you know, elk, deer, uh, anything that you would uh, expect to see in Yellowstone, uh, you could pretty easily see it uh, in this general area. So uh, everything from the uh, peregrine falcons or ospreys that nest uh, in these canyon walls um, all the way uh, to, like I see hearing, like I said, hearing the wolf howl in the evenings um, is possible here at the Grand Canyon. Yellowstone's amazing in so many ways. Thomas Moran had never really ever been camping long term or even ridden a horse prior to going to Yellowstone, so everything was new to him. He also couldn't very easily replicate his full art studio in the field. He could only carry a few supplies and had to rely on sketches and watercolors that he could then develop into more detailed pieces later on. So is he sketching right from where you're standing now? So we're actually here at Artist Point, um, which is on the south rim of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Uh, it's called Artist Point because this is a very great view of the Lower Falls, uh, and it is great for artists of any type, whether it's a painter or photographer uh, or a uh, sketch artist, uh, to see the falls. However, you're right. Uh, Thomas Moran was on the north rim of the, uh, the canyon, so he would have been across the way from us. Um, the canyon is about 1,200 feet deep. It's, uh, the falls itself is 308 feet tall, and the width of the canyon is about 1,200 uh, feet. So he would have been that way uh, on the other side of the canyon, uh, a couple of thousand feet probably uh, from where he actually sat to do the sketches that led to the big picture. Thanks so much, Alicia. It's neat to be able to pair this iconic painting with the actual location 150 years apart. That wraps things up for today. Keep following along with the hashtag Big Picture Morans on Facebook and Twitter with Interior Museum. Learn more about Yellowstone National Park at nps.gov forward slash Y-E-L-L. And learn more about our Thomas Moran and the Big Picture exhibition at DOI dot gov forward slash interior museum. Thanks for seeing the big picture.